Hi, it's Dan Seiler. Today I'm with Lauren Cotton and we're here at Lakata Live. And uh, before we get started, I just want to uh, take care of a housekeeping issue. Make a comment uh, on our broadcast in the uh, chat section and you'll be eligible for two tickets. Let me just check these tickets out. Uh, for, the, for this Friday's game at 7.05. Right, that's July 9th because the holidays here, we want to make sure okay. everybody's tracking correctly. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not either. I'm not tracking. <laughs> but if you haven't been to the Fred Nats game, it's a blast. Uh, our seats are in the shaded section of the stadium, so it's uh, as comfortable as comfortable can be, and hopefully our Fred Nats will persevere as they are beginning to turn Many corners, we're just not sure which corner they're turning in terms of being <laughs> successful. That seems but it, to... win or lose, it's, it's, a, it's a great time. And like Dan said, you'll be in the shade. So this time of year when it's in the 90s and hot and humid, you'll appreciate the shade. You'll have some fun. and Right, yeah. right. And if you miss this time, we're going to be doing a, a group event August 29th for uh, our clients and, uh, you know, Plug in, plug in uh, with us on Facebook and stay tuned uh, to, to that. So I think uh, we're going to start out today. It's going to be an unusual Lakata Live. It's going to be, you know, statistics because we keep seeing some changes in the marketplace, right, Laura? We do. We do. And we're getting a lot of questions, you know, is it, a, is it a still a seller's market? Are the houses flying off the shelves? Is it a great time to sell my house? Are interest rates still low for buyers? So, I mean, we do get a, a, a lot of a lot of questions. Right. And we like to say um, a lot in our business, we talk about shifts, and we don't think we're seeing a shift per se in a big macro sense, but uh, one of our colleagues summarized it as a microburst, and we'd like to share a little bit of that information about microburst. But uh, let's let's start with Lauren. She's going to share some statistics with you about the local real estate market that we think are pertinent. Go ahead. All right. So first, I'm going to start off with Lake of the Woods. And forgive me, I don't have this memorized. I, I do have it written down. So first, I'm going to start off with Lake of the Woods. As of just before us going live, there are currently 30 active listings in Lake of the Woods. And those listings range in prices from 265 to about 700000 um, so 30 listings, that's, that's a lot for, <laughs> for what we have Aspen, been, been yeah. seeing. So just, you know, a month or even two months, three months ago, we might be seeing eight active listings on the market. So to have 30 homes in Lake of the Woods to choose from right now, to actually have available to us to show, it, it really does seem like, seem sure. like a lot. So 30 active listings in Lake of the Woods, there are currently 40 that are under contract and 36, um, there have been 36 closings within the last 30 days for Lake of the Woods. So Orange County, so now I'm gonna talk about Orange County as a whole, but I'm not gonna include the Lake of the Woods stats. We just went over the Lake of the Woods stats. So just in the county, not to include Lake of the Woods, there are 64 active listings, and those range in price from 150,000 to just under 10 million. That's, that's a pretty wide, <laughs> pretty, pretty wide, wide range. range. But okay. you know, I just to segue for a second, that means there's some affordability in Orange County. And if you're working in Fredericksburg or Culpeper, that's a possible option for you to live in Orange County. Absolutely. A little less taxes oh, yeah. and uh, some opportunity to uh, to enter into home ownership. Absolutely, absolutely. So 64 active listings um, in Orange County, and there are 100 that are under contract, and 52 have closed within the last 30 days. And then I also just wanted to give just a, a brief overview of what it looks like in Spotsy County. Yeah, too. you got to show Spotsy some right. love, as they say, right? <laughs> that's right. Well, I'm, I'm a little biased. Orange County is my home, so I always like to start, with, start with, 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 he's Spotsy, so we'll go with Spotsy for him. But there are 248 active listings in Spotsylvania County right now, which that number is up also. And those range in prices from 90000 to just under $7 million. So again, Wide price range. Wide price range. There are 436 that are currently under contract, 
And in the last 30 days, there have been 298 that have gone to settlement in Spotsylvania County. So we like to give, I, I'm partial to Orange County, <laughs> but we are certainly not Orange County or even just Fredericksburg um, realtors. We do all counties in the central and northern Virginia areas. So if you want stats that, um, you know, if you live in Woodbridge, if you live in Warrington and you want stats, you know, that pertain to your area, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to give those to you. We just thought we would start with just this local area right. today. Right. And, you know, one of the things that we do on a regular basis for our clients is, hey, we do neighborhood reports. We do. So you can take the county or the city and you can drill that down into neighborhoods, provided the neighborhoods have enough of a population to warrant reporting. And from from my experience, and I think Lawrence, too, you're going to find most neighborhoods have neighborhood reports. If not, we can generate the... Uh, bought and sold statistics and what the average cost of homes were in it. And for your for your area, if you don't have a large enough neighborhood to, to populate, like, like Dan said, so. Right, and you know, we're seeing that in Western Spotsylvania County, folks are moving out from Fredericksburg to uh, the county, getting close to Lake Anna and areas like that. And they wanna know, hey, um, you know, tell me about what's, what's going on in the neighborhood. That's right. And sometimes there, the neighborhoods are so fresh and young and growing uh, as a result of COVID, for example, that uh, you've got to really kind of dig down into the weeds, so to speak, and get that data. That's right. That's right. But we can do that for you. So if there's an area that you're looking or inter just interested or if you're not interested in listing your home but just want some information for your neighborhood, feel free to reach out to either myself or Dan. You could pick up the phone and call anybody in the office and they'd be happy to help you with that. Great. So Lauren just took it from the micro perspective. I'm going to take it to the national perspective. And, and I am not a, a memorizer of statistics <laughs> this morning. So let me just share. This is a report that just was published June, uh, July 1st, excuse me. So just the other day from the National Association of Realtors. The national inventory of active listings declined 43% over last year. How many times have we talked about yeah, inventory? We have. While the total inventory of unsold homes, including pending listings, declined by 20%. Again, if you don't have the houses to sell, you're not going to be able to sell them, right? That's right. But here's the microburst uh, situation that we're seeing not only nationally, but also regionally in the Fredericksburg Association of Realtors area, King George, Orange County, Spotsylvania County, Fredericksburg, and that area. And here's what uh, has been uh, recorded. Newly listed homes on the market are up 5.5% nationally as compared to a year ago, and 11.7% higher for large metro areas over the past year. That's good news for all of us that are looking for a home. And you might have noticed it in your own neighborhood. Maybe you've seen, like I have in my neighborhood of Lees Hill, I've seen some signs pop up. Now, interesting uh, statement. However, <laughs> NAR goes on to say, the, the association goes on to say, sellers are still listing at rates lower than previous years. So what does that tell us, Lauren? That, that tells us that there has been a little bit of a shift, just, just, a, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. It is still a, a very strong market, and we would say it's still a, very much a seller's market, seller's market yeah. but there has been just, just a little bit of a shift. So I know both Lauren, uh, probably more so than myself, since Lauren is a listing specialist, and I do buyers and sellers, a lot of my buyers have been frustrated over the past few months about not having a, enough homes to look at. So this little shift, this microburst, mm -hmm. as we call it, is now telling buyers, hey, interest rates are still very, very reasonable low, yeah. and there's more houses on the market to buy. So 
don't give up the ship. <laughs> Stay <laughs> working with your realtor, <laughs> yes. your, your yes. real estate advisor. And we're, we're going to be probably uh, experiencing some opportunity we haven't seen in the past 14 months. And I'm serious when I say 14 months, I am not exaggerating in the least. So, Lauren, if it means there's more houses to sell, what's the approach that a seller might now want to take with you when they're doing a consultation and you're sharing your experience and this information? Right. So just within, you know, just a few months ago, the conversations that we were having with our sellers are a little different than the conversations that we're having right now. Um, say three months ago, maybe the little bit of dirty carpet or the, the wall that you didn't really want to paint, we would say, you know, that's, it's probably okay in this market because there's just so few homes to choose from. Buyers are overlooking some of those things that, that maybe right now, since there is, you, have, you would have more competition, some of those things that we would say a few months ago didn't really matter, they are coming back into play and they are starting to, to matter now. So maybe you should go ahead and do some of those home repairs where right. a few months ago, you know, didn't, right. didn't, matter, didn't matter so much. That, that's my impression too. So Lorna and I had the opportunity to talk to one of my uh, clients and we basically framed it out on if you want top dollar, here's what you need to be thinking about. Correct. If you're interested in foregoing the work to get that top dollar, well, here's the price point that you may be wanting to think about. But we want to give our clients the option. So right. we have a lot of clients, like many around the United States, who over the course of several years has built up equity, especially in the last three years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let's say hey, you need to move or you want to move to a different location and you have the salary to uh, accumulate to purchase a new home and you have money set aside for the down payment of that new home, but you don't have a whole lot of money to replace the carpet throughout the house. So one of the options that we would give you is put you in touch with one of our providers that would defer payment until the house closes and goes to settlement. Correct. So with a little bit of planning, strategic planning that is, the seller can optimize the return of their home, get the top dollar right. that, that we like to talk about without having to outlay funds. Now, can you do this all the time? Well, no, it depends upon the type of service and the relationships that we have with our providers. Now, when we talk about relationships with our providers, we're talking to providers with the understanding that we do over 200 transactions a year. So folks come to us and say, why would I work with a team? You know, what, what benefit does the team give me? Well, that's one of the benefits. If you're doing 200 transactions a year versus an agent who's only doing say 10 a year, well, guess who has the buying power, the trust, and the confidence of the general public? Well, it's us as an organization, and that goes back to why team? Why would you use the group? Right. And, and we get that question. Here's one of the responses that gives you accessibility, right. doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And like Dan said, we have some trusted vendor referrals, um, you know, trusted vendors that we work with that we'd be happy to refer. And every situation is, is, is unique. Like Dan said, there may be an opportunity to do some of those things to the house and, and have the vendor paid it at settlement. Not all vendors work that way. That's correct. Um, Not so all it of them. really, like, like Dan already said, it depends on the situation and, and the need. But what we always say is if you want top dollar for your home, it, it does need to look top dollar. And that's more important now than it was, you know, just, just a few months ago. Right. It's changing. We want to keep you abreast of the change. And that's why we do this Lakata Live every week because the market is not static. It moves sometimes seemingly slowly, sometimes 
at rapid pace. Correct. And we want to make sure that everybody's in tune with that rapid pace of change. Right. Right. So typically during the summer, we would see a bit of a shift during the summer months anyway. Once right. people start going on vacation, once graduations are happening, there's always a little bit of a shift. There might be, a, you know, you, know, you can look at it two ways. Some people love to move during the summer because they don't have to worry about pulling their kids out of school in the middle of the school year. Um, but other times, you know, it slows down a little bit. People are busy doing other things and they're not, you know, so focused on finding a home. But between graduations and COVID restrictions easing, you know, there's lots of factors that, that play into this, you know, this little bit of, sh of a shift. There was so much pent up demand um, during COVID of those that didn't want to sell, they didn't want to buy, they didn't want to go into other people's homes, they didn't want to have other people coming into right, their coming homes. Right, coming into their homes, So yeah. there was so much pent-up demand once the restrictions started easing, and we feel like some of that has kind of worked its worked its way out. That said, it's still a very, very strong market, still a seller's market. Or we're not expecting any kind of big bubble. We no. get asked that all the time, you know, when's this going to... When's this bubble gonna burst? When when are uh, every when's everything gonna crash? We there are, is no crash. We are students of the market. We do a whole whole lot of um, research, and and Dan is really good about um, <laughs> keeping current matters and and keeping us all on track with the training and the forecasting and everything that we are seeing right. suggests that it, it's just not the case. It's just really supply and demand, and there's just not a whole lot of supply. Right, so we want to keep you in pace with what the demand is so that when you're ready to find a home, that we're there for you. That's so right. I think I think we're pretty well done for the day. I think, I think so. I we're think... going to keep it short and sweet today <laughs> on purpose uh, because all of us, thankfully, <laughs> are catching up from a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Yes. And I myself went swimming with a group of people for the first time in... A year. Oh yeah, we had we had a large gathering at our house this weekend too, and it was so nice to get everybody back together. It it, it had been about a year and a half since yeah. we were all together, so it was really nice to see the friends and the family that that we haven't seen. So beautiful weekend, beautiful weather here in Virginia. We Memorial Day weekend wasn't so nice. Wasn't so, so, nice. <laughs> so, so, so so this weekend was was a nice wonderful weather weekend here yeah so get out there we're here for you and, and just just one more okay oh, yeah. oh. about the about the tickets the fred knack oh, yeah, tickets the fred knack just ticket. just one more reminder go ahead and comment below um i think jasmine is going to be pulling um one winner from whoever comments um sometime i think later today yeah i think so oh so, you know before we forget uh, for those who are interested in our local community here at Lake of the Woods, we'll be holding six open houses right. this Saturday okay. from 2 to 3.30, I think, it, or from 12 to 3.30. Right, 12 so, to 3.30. So we're going to hold three open, and then we're going to hold three more open. We're going to do it in two different splits. So stay tuned to our Facebook page for more information yes. about that. And the whole staff will be involved in that, and we want... We want to see you there. If yep. nothing else, come out, say hello. That's right. It's time to engage. That's right. It's right. Time, definitely Looking time to, to engage. You. Yeah. All right. Have a good have a good week. And if you need anything, just uh, post a comment. Ask us a question on Facebook. We're here for you. That's Take right. care. Bye.